Hello, now you're here, I think, to watch a video about Audio Bro's new modern scoring brass library. If you want to see a video about radiators or something, then uh, go somewhere else on YouTube. Um, so this is just going to be a very broad 30 minute overview of how I have it set up and how I have it arranged. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of that setup. This is more just a feel of the library. It's not exactly how it comes out of the box. Uh, I've separated into long and short patches that you see here and I've changed, I've got rid of their re reverb and using the Seventh Heaven reverb uh, of mine um, just to keep resource use down and the reverb's just a bit cleaner I think, although this is very nice. What I have is long and short patches for each instrument. I have one octave above on the instruments too. There's the mutes and there's this intuition series, solo instruments as well. Uh, let's crack on. Oh, no, no, let me just tell you, this is Cubase here. This is Vienna Ensemble Pro, where I'm hosting all the instruments. As I need them, I load them into RAM, and it takes a couple of seconds. You'll see that in action. Right, so here's the longs. Um, I'm in a unison mode here. That's four trumpets playing one note. If I play two notes, it's two trumpets playing two notes. If I play four, that is four individual trumpets each playing a note, and all that's automatic and in the background. And ain't it clever? It seems to work very well. Let's go through the controls. I have these mapped to my Avid Artist, as is my way. So look here. These are the controls here, and obviously you're seeing the front page of the of the instrument itself in here. Um, you'll notice I've done a thing uh, in Cubase that as well as CC1, the Dynamics mod wheel, this is going to, this is CC11. Um, I ride volume on the volume fader, but if I, I wanted a bit more range on this library, so... That control is going with it. Just it was a little bit lacking in overall dynamics, I felt. So that solves that. Sizzle, if you're wondering what sizzle is, I'm gonna to go to the higher dynamics where you really hear it. There you go, it's like a filter. It kind of it's not even noticeable on lower dynamics. It's just that bite, isn't it? It's the, it works pretty effectively. If you will need more of that to cut through. If you're going, whoa, that's a bit much. So you can still have all the power without quite so much of that, as I call it. Uh, edit point, I did something stupid, I'm back. So we have monophonic legato here. Oops. And we'll switch it back now to polyphonic mode. I'm playing Thriller today for some reason. Um, there we go. That's, so that's legato mode. Sustains. Are pretty much the same, but without all that scripting. You won't get note transitions. So if you just want to be uncomplicated, there it is. Um... I've got my longs and shorts separate, so what else is on here? Flutter time. A shock horror moments. Um, I'm sure it can be used in less crass ways. Trills, this is nice. Uh, let's switch this to free, it's tempo synced. Uh, here it's free. So your trill speed, you've got complete control over, minor and major of course. Out of the box, these are set up differently, it's all very clever and swish, but I'm kind of old school, I wanted these on key switches. Um, oh, detune, I didn't show you detune, so let's go back to the...
High School Musical. Sometimes I find these trumpets just a bit too perfect, so just... A tiny bit of movement there, or the vibrato, which is very subtle on the trumpets. It's more pronounced on the others. So I'll... See it going there, right on the left, vibrato. Told you it was subtle. If I play a chord... Very subtle indeed. On the others, you'll hear it a lot more. But the lower dynamics may be a bit more prominent. It's just that subtlest of movement, isn't it? Kind of helps, I think, with the trumpets. Just that perfect... I mean, the meticulous nature that they've done this library. It's It's amazing but just sometimes you go ah dirty up just a little bit and you can do that there are other more clever ways as well with the humanization engine which i'm not going to go into right now um let's do a quick whistle stop tour of the shorts i'll scroll this down so you can see me shorts patches you can see me shorts just how lucky you are this is double tongue the fastest speed um i've got here the dynamics on keys Uh, so going through the speeds, that's the next one, sixteenth, eighth, and uh, quarters. What am I doing that for? And here CC1 is just doing the volume, all the change in dynamics is on my key velocity here uh there's a few other things here too that's a schwarzando crescendo that's a regular crescendo it doesn't have the bat at the start of it um and those are adjustable by speed as well so or <laughs> kind of ridiculous but you know works very well uh, nerd point if you're running your session at 44.1 the trills will glitch and that's a contact thing it's not their fault i discovered it <laughs> um run it at 48 and they won't do any glitches those are under trills rather than these anyway. i don't know why i said it now it just entered my head i'm so sorry there's a tightness control here I should let you listen to that i think normally you want to leave it on off but here's what happens if you start turning it up Might in very quick, precise. You might want to use a bit of it to get super tight, but normally it sounds better off. Uh, that's oh rips. Um, oh, where's rips? Have I got rips here? No, that's my rips control is for the horns. Ignore what I just did. And one other thing I forgot to show you, quite important this. Dynamics are all on CC1 here, as I've shown you already. But what's mapped to velocity is attack control. So if I turn this up here. When I play gently on the key, it's a smooth attack. If I hit it harder, it'll be an accented one. And I hit it hardest, it's a more pronounced marcato. I'll do that a different. So hitting the keys hard affects the sound in one way, the attack sound of it and the dynamics fix it the other. And that's how I've got it set up. Out of the box is slightly different. That's just how I like to work. We haven't moved off trumpets yet. I'll be going through the rest a lot quicker than that. I'm just showing you all the different features. Let's get some uh, piccolo trumpets going. Um, there it is, so it takes about two or three seconds to load from memory. Let's switch these to mono legato. Here we go.
Goes very high. Playing a piccolo. So that's now switch it back to poly. Got a sizzle low on this, so it's got more bite. If you want it. And with this one octave, if I want to do a combined line, um, uh, what do I want to do? Just hit that, don't I? That's quite a nice effect, isn't it? Uh, that's your piccolo trumpet, so it's a short... And so on. Let's move on to the horns and resist the urge to do any gags about have you got the horn? No, I'm going to. No, no. Let's see what we're doing. That sounds like sizzle is down. No, it's spat in the middle. Okay. for a moment. down low as well. What I hope you're hearing through all this sort of polyphonic stuff, you're not getting that fake build up that you always get with samples or nearly always get with samples. Oh, sounds like a brass section, imagine that. So there are two horns, uh, two lots of four horns is what it is. Um, let's just get the other ones up and running. Uh, they're very similar, but if you sort of A-B them occasionally, you'll hear a little slight difference. Oh, I'm on mono. Sorry. Shall I release 12 CDs of me noodling in C minor? Is my noodling key. So it's all much the same. You can double up, of course, to have 12 here. Let's give you a quick blast of some shorts here. And you can see what I'm doing. Turn the sizzle up more. What's 
some rips here as well. We do. And there are different sorts. How about that? Fourth. Fifth. Octave. Nice, isn't it? Um, there was something else I didn't show you. Oh, I'm just going to play a bit of flower horns before we move on. So I ain't done it, have I? There's a flutter crescendo as well. For nice dramatic moments. I'm a, such a hack, I love all that. Um, and we have a flugelhorn. Uh, I don't know if I should be putting them in with horns, but it had the word horn in it, and it was a useful way to group them because all the rest fit somewhere. Right, okay. Where are we here? Let's let you see what we're doing. Flugel, flugelhorn, there we are. Flugelhorns mixed long, lovely. That's not on. Need to fix that. Starting to play because I'm enjoying it. Uh, let's see what that sizzle does. Then. And the vibrato here. See, it's really clear on that. I mean, it's still not over the top, but it's just a bit subtle on those trumpets. Mono lines. Oh, look at the speed, it's very low there. For some reason it was on minimum. Right, right, there we go. At this point, why don't I take this moment to say I'm skipping all the mutes. Um, there's muted horn. Let's just play you a bit of... Well, no, I'll come back to the mutes at the end. <laughs> I'm never going to remember, am I? Uh, let's play you a bit of solo flugelhorn. These patches are different. These are what they call intuition patches, which is some kind of witchcraft that I don't understand. And is samples, but it's also modelled stuff somehow. Where is it? Here we go. Found it. So it's a sort of a strange hybrid, but it works really well. See how fast you can get with those transitions on this. Vibrato. Connect. This is, if I play a few notes, you'll hear what it does. slightly drunken at that end. Works very well in the middle. Staccato. And a poly. So it doesn't sound fake to me at all. It's a great way to have, um, let's just get a, a, a French horn. Um, uh, 
they're they're fantastic. I think they are re they work incredibly well for the for solo more defined lines. They're terrific. Um, let's whiz on to some trombones. They call tenor trombones just trombones. It took me a I kind of when I first got the library, I thought, um, what's going on? Because I thought they'd combined alto and bass and tenor all in one trombone patch. They haven't. They're actually, I think they are tenor ones. Anyway, I'm not on that. I'm on alto. So I know what I'm talking about that for. Edit point, I had a phone call. Right, tenors. So I'm hearing transitions there. I don't know if you are too. So let's switch that to the sustain mode. smooth I was accenting attacks as well so you hear the control occasionally you know you might have to fiddle like that let's give you a bit of um mono trombones not bass trombones and goes right up to you. aren't entirely pleasing me all the time but switching to sustain will need it you know it's fine um do you just want a tiny bit of short can't see can you you can't see It says longs, it's a line, it's really short, as you can hear. Just gonna check a thing. Yeah. So I've added some sizzle back in that. It's just off the page there. Anyway, you get the idea. Bass bones, let's load them too, if you thought that was low. Um, put you up here. Even in the bass section, the amount of options you've got to go in is ridiculous. So let's just do a little thing here very quickly. If I put this in menu, mono legato, and now I'll go to my plus ones and let's add a tenor also in mono, an octave higher, and now hopefully 
that's going to work. No, because I haven't pressed that button. Yeah, I like those octave buttons. It was a wild idea I had yesterday. I think they might be of occasional use. Um, right, let's go on to long euphoniums. I really like these euphoniums because rare to get them in sample libraries. To me, they kind of say British Brass Band. It's, it's... Uh, you know. It's got a lovely, warm, rich tone. Subtle again. So subtle, in fact. Let me just see, because I'm not letting you look at it again. You're screaming at me, Guy, change it so we can see what's going on. Well, it... You're at lower dynamics there. So essentially, to a, uh, a hack like me, the tuba is all the warmth. It's warm tuba. You don't get grunt here, but you get your warmth and your hem. Euphoniums are in the middle between that and the chimbassi, which is eh. So. Recognize that. We watch a Muppet Christmas Carol every year, and that's a little motif from it. It's lovely in the highs as well. Finally, the maximum grunt of the chimbassi, which it calls chimbassos. Now, I don't claim to be an expert on this stuff, but I thought the plural was chimbassi. Is it simbassi? I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. And there's people all over the world laughing at me. Well, laugh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that was me on the pitch bend, not the mod wheel. And of course the temptation to do this becomes somewhat overwhelming. But even when you do this... ...and start playing crazy chords... Doesn't sound fake because you don't have that sample build up. So I'm the other end of the keyboard away from the microphone. Oh, hey. 
Um, so loads of options in the lows there. Uh, I t promised you muted trumpets and muted things, so I better I better make good on it. These are completely separately recorded. None of these are just filters or anything. Uh, and I should do the same with the, the mutants and, and the horns, at least, and the stopped horns. I mean, there is so much stuff. This, this, it took me a long time to put in the template just because, um, just because of the sheer volume of it. I've done something there. I can hear it. I've left on their own built-in reverb. I did tell you about the reverb, right? Um... This is all Seventh Heaven, my reverb, not theirs. Uh, it's like detuning there, it's quite nice. Uh, and it, you, so you've got mutes for horns one and two and stopped for one and two and you know you just got the time and the effort this must have taken to re do this Crazy. I think we're below the recorded range there, aren't we? Yeah, maybe lay off those. Um, there you go. I think that's all the basics. Uh, did you want to hear a bit of solo, solo horn? I played you trumpet, didn't I? Did I play you solo horn already? If I've done this, I'm going to play it again. Uh, I did play it. Um, right. Well, I think that's all the basics then. Uh, if you want to see a little more under the hood and how I've set this up, I'll do another video for that when I can be bothered. Um, but I hope that gives you a flavour of the library, despite my endlessly te tedious C minor noodlings. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll do at least one more video that shows those things. But thank you for watching, as ever. Um, and I'll see you on another one. Bye.